Welcome to 20 Minute Health Talk. I'm your host, Rob Hoyle. Today, you'll hear from a very special group of people, centenarians, all over 100 years old. They recently shared their New Year's resolutions for 2024 in a TV commercial for Northwell Health inspired by their hopes and goals. We wanted to learn a little bit more about them and their secrets to living a long life. Also, with us to provide some perspective and guidance on healthy aging is Dr. Maria Carney. She is the Chief of Geriatric and Palliative Medicine at Northwell Health, and she's the former Nassau County Health Commissioner. Dr. Carney, welcome to the show. First things first, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. We're so excited to kick off this episode by listening to this commercial, which aired around New Year's called Resolutions. Uh, but before we do that, Dr. Carney, what's your New Year's resolution? Oh, that's a good question. My new year. <laughs> and did you break it already? <laughs> no, I am doing dry January. Oh, nice. I okay, will, good. Uh, and yep. I'm happy that that's been so far successful. And my New Year's resolution is just trying to stay a little bit more active, more yeah. walking and exercise. Um, so so far, so good. Awesome, excellent. Uh, well, let's l- take a listen to this commercial that aired okay. on. What's my New Year's? Resolution, now that I think about it, is that I should smile more. (laughs) I haven't done skydiving. (laughs) I want to see more of the world. To make a difference. To sleep a little later. (laughs) I want to dance the next slide. I want to get a new bachelor pad. I want to keep winning at poker. Northwell Race Health. (laughs) <laughs> That's great. It's so amazing. And you look at these people, and you would, if you saw them out, if you met them in a, in a restaurant or something else, you would never think that they're 100. Yeah. You know, or over 100. They're over 100 years old. No. And we tend to categorize older adults as different, right? But mm-hmm. what these individuals did, you see a little bit of yourselves in sure. them, right? And yeah. you can say, wow, I. That, that's me. I'm thinking about my resolutions, not dissimilar to how they're thinking about their resolutions. So that could be me. Yeah. Um, so I think that's another key here. Well, you know, it's interesting, I think, too, is like, obviously, they, they just took the parts for the commercial because they need to fit it all into a 30 second ad. But there was a lot more uh, to the footage. And so they gave some really great insights. Uh, do you want to hear a little bit more of, of some of one, what I'd, they had to say? I'd love to. Okay, let's kick it off with uh, Lenora D'Ambrosio. Today, she is 102 years old. And she says that her longevity has to do a lot with her diet. People ask me, what do I attribute my longevity to? In the first place, I say I owe it all to God. God's been good to me. And I say olive oil because I eat a Mediterranean diet and I have always eaten a Mediterranean diet being from Italian background. And I have some neighbors that don't ever eat a vegetable, a green vegetable. I eat my green vegetables and and I eat raw vegetables and salads. Lenora talks about the Mediterranean diet. I hear that all the time, the Mediterranean diet. Is that something that's going to help you live longer? Yes. Studies have shown that antioxidants from blueberries and other fresh fruits help longevity. Uh, The olive oil helps uh, with cardiovascular system. And really, it's based on olive oil, fresh uh, uh, fruits and vegetables, um, fish, uh, lean meat, chicken, So, yes, her background um, supports it, the literature supports it, and there's truth to this. That's awesome. She also mentions, which I think is fascinating, she mentions her faith. Yes. Um, That, too, has been a key to longevity for many reasons. Not only a belief system, but I think it helps with understanding when you— it creates a support system of people, of network— and also helps you deal with events or traumas that you go through to give you peace and coping skills. So I think having a spirituality, faith, a community that you believe in and can go to uh, helps one as we live longer. Because the longer we live, the more likely we're going to face some trauma, and we have to learn how to cope with it. And I think that it sounds like that is how it's helped her. That's awesome. So let's switch gears and talk about stress. One of us centenarians had a very interesting take uh, on stress. This is Angelina Teresi, who is 103. And uh, let's see what she had to say. 
Uh, you know, when people ask you, how do you stay so young? No sex. Does you know it's true? If you don't have a husband, you don't have kids, so you don't get the stress, and the stress is the biggest killer. So that's the answer. No sex? <laughs> no sex. <laughs> So there you have it. There you go. There you uh, go. I don't know if we could say that's doctor's orders, but what's your take? Well, I think uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think stress um, can wear on individuals, and you can reverse it. You can say that you can have a spouse. You can have intimacy. You can have friendships. You can have relationships. Those will help you in life and support you. But if you have negative relationships, um, that can definitely cause stress and hurt you over time. So I'm going to spin it that way. How <laughs> okay. about that? All right. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, all right. Angelina also talked about exercise, perhaps a safer bet when it comes to living longer. Uh, another one of the stars of this commercial is Isadora Blank. Isadora Blank uh, also stressed the importance of staying active in life. Let's listen to this 102-year-old that people call Izzy. I do my walking every day because I got a uh, walking helps you a lot. I used to walk six miles a day. I did a lot of walking all the time. You know, Izzy has an amazing story. He was born in Romania, 1922. Mm -hmm. He and his family made it to America, and he went out to work on cars and, and raise a family. What role does exercise play in longevity? Exercise, activity, not being sedentary, plays an enormous role. It can decrease mortality twofold. It is an important factor for cardiovascular health, brain health, bone health, and preventing injuries and falls. I have patients that, uh, whether they play golf or do housework or are just active, and that helps um, their mind, heart, and musculoskeletal system. It is the number one issue that, as Americans, we struggle with. We are sedentary people. iPads, screens, TV are what we have to fight against and stay active with, whether it be walking, whether it's staying active in your own home, your social networks. And Northwell does that yeah. with our every walk spring, challenges. our walk challenges. Yeah. We need more of that in, the, in society. Walking clubs, walking challenges, not running marathons necessarily because that's right. intimidating, but just staying active. And six miles a day, that's amazing. All right, so diet, exercise, and stress are all things that uh, a doctor or doctor's plurals can help us manage along with other health conditions. And keeping regular doctor's appointments is key uh, at all ages. But I imagine it gets even more critical as we get older. Uh, this is Margaret Madeline, who was born in 1922. She is 101 years young, and she had this to say about it. And very grateful, very grateful that my health needs are met with a home health um, a doctor who visits me monthly. And um, that is a, a godsend because my vision and hearing aren't that great. And that keeps me going. I don't have to worry about getting transportation uh, to my regular physician every month. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I think the delivery of health care where individuals live is the future of medicine. We have to rely at a certain point on help from others when we get to a certain ability, age. And that is an issue for having a caregiver. And caregivers are often working. 70% of caregivers also have jobs. So they have to take time off and so forth. So if we can send teams to where a person lives and check on their health, that will save caregiver time. It will save the health system by involving or being 
on top of health problems before they become more serious. So having a primary care doctor, having a geriatrician, this woman has a geriatrician because I'm familiar with her, um, and she has a care brought to her is so unique and it should be reserved for individuals who have trouble getting out and about. In these interviews, a lot of people talk about his purpose. Um, you hear about a spouse dying soon after they lose a wife or husband or after re retirement. Uh, let's listen to this clip from Margaret who talks about a uh, purpose that keeps her going strong. Okay. I still work. Um, of course, it's, it's not okay, a paid job. Talking? It's volunteer. Um, but it serves a very um, needed uh, purpose. Um, at the independent living residence where I live. And that fills my, my life because it's giving me something that I can find pleasure in doing that I know is of value to others. And uh, it just makes me um, feel pretty good uh, that I'm still chugging along. To <laughs> great. I think that's just great. That's yeah. great. A little humility, just chugging along. Right. Um, I think purpose is important for everybody at any stage of life. Finding your purpose, finding your impact um, helps you get out of bed in the morning. And that's a great example. Yeah. Uh, another topic that came up a few times during these interviews is family. Uh, we're going to hear from Ben uh, Padovano. He's 102 years young, and uh, he had this to say about how his family keeps him going. To be in the situation I'm in and to have reasonably still have my health. But the main thing is I still have, uh, as I say, a quality of life because I have my grandchildren, my married son lives near me, nearby, so we get together quite a bit. That's nice. Yeah. I, I love how, the word. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say, how important is family support? I think um, support is very important. And what you call your family has yeah. to be broad. Okay. Right? Not everybody may have a sure. son nearby, but they have what they consider family. So I think that support is very important. And we can be creative or non-traditional about what family is. I, ha I take care of uh, some nuns that live in a con convents mm -hmm. across the region. And there's a lot to learn from their community that has become their family over time. So, yes, family and what you call family is extremely important. I also love what he said about his quality of life because we sometimes talk about longevity but in the literature, we're now starting to talk about health span versus lifespan. And what's, it's not necessarily how long you live, but what's your quality of life in that time we all have? Yeah. And he speaks to that. He's sure. realizing his quality of life is quite good. And he can only say that. We can't. So yeah. I, uh, I think that's an important aspect we need to think about when we think about us, ourselves as physicians, clinicians, who we care for, what's important to people? What's their quality of life? And how do we align it? Yeah, it's awesome. You know what's fascinating about Benny, too, is that he wants to start a podcast. So hopefully maybe we could be on his podcast one day. He's going to call his podcast uh, The Way It Is. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. And I, I would love to be on a show. And if, put me on the list. All right, great. <laughs> uh, another big part of his life, um, and it's our next topic, is pets. Um, mm -hmm. So Benny says pets play an important role in his life. So let's let's take a listen to that. Oh, I'm a cat person. I have all my life. We've had cats in my house. Presently, I have four, and about five or six strays that I feed each day on my porch. They're wonderful companions. Maybe it had, had something to do with my life extension. <laughs> Who knows? Because they say animals are very beneficial for uh, people's well-being. I have heard that, and we've seen it, um, and the literature has supported that pets, companionship, um, 
even plants to a certain extent. It's something you're caring for as well as you get feedback from somehow helps you. Um, so I've seen that. We do have to be careful that pets don't contribute to falls. All right. Okay. <laughs> so um, that would be my only caveat to be careful. So don't get a, make sure that the yeah. animal. Right. It's not maybe too rambunctious. Yes. Okay. Awesome. But, but yes, in terms of companionship, pets can be very uh, supportive and give warmth. Yeah. And they, and they always love you. They never, they never argue with you. They never got mad at you. They're always there for you. Right. <laughs> Right. That's awesome. Um, let's talk about sleep. It's mm-hmm. another topic that a lot of our friends here uh, have mentioned, and I want to ask you, Dr. Carney, what role uh, it might play in healthy aging. But first, let's hear from Priscilla Edmonds, who hit 100 years old uh, in 2023. My secret is I exercise a lot. I used to exercise a lot. I do the push-up aerobic uh, about an hour each day, but I haven't been doing it recently. Um, also eating healthy, plenty of sleep, and um, my thing, uh, be a good listener. Listen to what people have to say instead of just ignoring them. If you want to help someone, you got to have, you got to be a good listener in order to be, have a compassion for people. Great. Few points there that were wonderful. Um, sleep. So, sleep is an important factor, and the science we're learning more about it and how it's important to rejuvenating our cells, our brains, and our heart. Um, and being attuned to your sleep hygiene, your sleep patterns is important. S- phones, screens have come into our bedrooms and affected our sleep patterns. As we age, our sleep physiology also changes. So it can worry people. We may not be getting as long of sleep or as deep a sleep as we grow older. Um, So there may be opportunities to take short naps. uh, And but there's a need to rest. Um, And we have to be careful that we don't change our days and nights. If we sleep during the day, take a nap, that, that may decrease our sleep at night. So it's, a, it's something we have to be attuned to, we have to watch, but we have to rejuvenate our bodies, and so it's important. And be cautious that sleep aids, sleep medications, are not always the simple answer. Really look at your sleep hygiene and work on that first. When you talk about sleep hygiene, what do you mean? I mean, what is your going to bed pattern. What time are you going to bed? Um, Are you looking at your phone? Are you reading? Is there noise? Are there distractions? Do you have a TV in your room? Um, Are you uh, going through a routine that promotes sleep? Um, Is there noise around that going to interrupt your sleep? Are you watching the news before you go to bed that it's going to get you worried and, you know, trying to understand uh, what is helping or hurting your sleep? Are you drinking alcohol that that can affect your sleep? What medicines are you on that can affect your sleep? Um, so those are all the sleep hygiene kind of aspects. And there's a lot out there that you can read about having good sleep hygiene, um, noise reduction, screen reduction, uh, your getting to bed pattern, um, and... Um, and trying to keep your sleep at night as much as possible. Good, great, awesome. Well, we're almost out of time here on 20 Minute Health Talk. Let's close it out with Benny, who talks about genetics and how that's played a role in his longevity. I have, uh, I had a 100-year-old grandfather, 100-year-old aunt, several aunts in the 90s. I have an old, older brother pass away at 97. I have a younger brother still living who's going to be 96. No, he's going to be 97 also. So it's in the genes to a great extent. Not wrong, but also um, your genes, your genetic, your family history also promotes a social behavior. How many smoked? How many did risky behaviors? 
Um, so there's a component there. It's not all genetic. We also know with modern day healthcare who's at risk for diseases, how to screen for diseases, mammograms, colon cancers. There's genetic testing we can do for all of uh, many cancers, uh, brain diseases. So if you are with a thorough primary care doctor, you can go through the screenings early on to promote longevity and healthy living. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Carney, thank you so much for joining us here on 20 Minute Health Talk. This is actually your third time on the program, and it's always been a fascinating discussion, uh, but this may have been the f most fun topic we got to talk about. This is great. Thanks. I really enjoyed it, and um, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Rob Hoyle. Have a great day, and stay safe. Race Health.